This video is brought to you by the Tao Te Ching, The Virtual Way. Find out more at the end of the video. There are three kinds of sickness in the world and they all run rampant. These are physical diseases like cancer, arthritis, diabetes, and so on. Mental diseases like depression, anxiety, anger, lack of confidence, and so forth. And spiritual diseases such as dogmatism, indifference, living a purposeless life, and being ignorant of one's own divinity. All of these forms of illness are major issues in the world today, but that doesn't have to be how the story ends. Recently, we came across a book called Scientific Healing Affirmations by Paramahansa Yogananda, and we were amazed by what we found, a sound explanation of the root cause of disease and how to heal any illness. Today, we'll be sharing the essential teachings that Yogananda put forth, and may it guide us in our collective healing. We must begin by understanding the importance of addressing all three kinds of disease. Each form of disease causes bodily, mental, or spiritual suffering in a person. And to counter the disease, the appropriate remedy must be applied. In the world today, most of the focus of health is on physical illness. Although since the COVID pandemic, the subject of mental illness has also risen to prominence as a great issue within the collective conversation. Humanity is beginning to realize what effect our mental troubles have on us. Fear, despair, bereavement, worry, violent anger, and lack of self-control are all overpowering, and spiritual suffering through not being connected with one's own soul is even greater still. To understand diseases better, we should think of reality as actually inside out from what we typically think. The material is informed by the invisible, and physical disease thus has its origin in mental and spiritual inharmony. Lack of awareness about the laws of mental hygiene and the art of spiritual living are responsible for all human bodily and material suffering. If the mind is free from the mental bacteria of anger, fear, or failure consciousness, then no material disease or lack can follow. Who wants sickness in body, mind, or soul? And who needs medicine, mental or spiritual healing, if they are well? It is through our ignorance, our lack of knowing, that we break the laws of harmony by which the body was created and fall into disharmony and disease. It is usually only then that we typically seek methods of cure. And so we must know that the difference between matter, thought, and spirit consists in the rate of vibration and is a difference of degree, not of kind. This is illustrated by the fact that all vibrations are qualitatively alike. The vibration of consciousness, however, is so subtle and so powerful that it cannot be detected by any material instrument we have created in our scientific field so far. For this reason, and at least for now, only consciousness can comprehend consciousness. Conscious human beings can detect the conscious vibrations of other humans, as people and the whole of nature is constantly impressing its vibratory force on its environment, which is felt through emotion, intuition, and thought. You might think of reality then as consciousness being a finer force existing within a coating of a denser vibratory force called matter. It may also be said that consciousness is the first vibration of spirit and that matter in turn is the result of the denser and heavier vibration of consciousness. While it's useful to draw it like this, one layer after the other, it may be more valuable to see them entirely on top of each other. This is a nearly identical drawing of the Kabbalistic tree of life, which describes all of creation emanating from a supreme oneness and into the dense material reality by the gaining of density. Understanding this, we can see why healing truly begins with mental and spiritual healing in order to truly cure a physical disease. Now, some watching this may disapprove of this idea because how could healing fear or ignorance result in someone's cancer going away? Disease is generally thought of as a result of external material causes, but disease actually arises through the inaction of the life force within. When the life force is affected in the cells and tissues within the body, the life force withdraws from that place and trouble consequently starts. Every method of healing today, from medicine to massage, all help stimulate the cell in such a way as to support the inactive life force into returning to that part of the body and resume its former work of repair and keeping the energy vital. It is not wise for any of us to become extremists. However, we should adopt whatever methods of healing that are suitable according to our own individual conviction. This does not discredit the essential material laws of reality, whether it's medicine, food, or poison, they all have a definite chemical effect on one's body. These things are all useful, especially when dealing in the material conscious reality, but they are not without their limitations because they are all applied from the outside. 
It should be understood that these resources cannot cure a disease outright, but they can coax the life force energy to return to that part of the body, which is a part of the healing process. But if the physical is treated and the mental and spiritual are left unresolved, then the disease will either return as it was or transform and manifest in a new form of suffering. Sometimes in the physical healing process, new mental or spiritual patterns emerge, which help the disease go away or at least be reduced in its next manifestation. It is for this reason that the best method of healing is from within. By going within and connecting with the light of one's soul, the life force energy returns to every part of your being. In massage, osteopathic treatment, chiropractic, Reiki, or yoga, no introduction of a foreign element like a pill or a shot is involved. And by these methods, we can remove or relieve the congestion in the nerves or vertebrae and allow the free flow of life energy. Sometimes in the spiritual minded communities today, there is a dismissal of mainstream medicine in exchange for alternative approaches to healing. But there is a place for medicine in society. It may be very useful depending on what's happening and a supportive aid in one's journey through health. Consider if the arm has been fractured, isn't it foolish to give God the supreme oneness the trouble of joining your displaced bones when a doctor who is also a child of God can fix it by a little use of his skill and knowledge of the laws of creation as applied to matter? Now, of course, if you are such a master of pure beingness that you can instantaneously heal your broken bones by your mental power, that's perfectly admissible, but don't wait to take that action. With all of that said, there is a very critical aspect of healing, which Yogananda explained that must be taken seriously. And that is the power of one's word through which we create our realities for sickness or health. As it is described, Words are sounds occasioned by the vibrations of thoughts, which are vibrations sent forth either by the ego or by the soul. Every word that leaves your mouth ought to be potent with your genuine soul vibration. Alas, for most people, their words are lifeless because they are spoken forth without being impregnated by soul force. Too much talking, exaggeration, or lies used in connection with words is just like shooting actual bullets out of a toy gun without the gunpowder. This is why the prayers or words of such people do not produce any definite changes in their lives. Every word you utter, you must mean it. And every word you put forth must represent not only truth, but some of your realized soul force. Words without soul force are husks without the corn. On the other hand, words saturated with sincerity, conviction, faith, and intuition are just like highly explosive vibration bombs which when let out are sure to explode the rocks of difficulties and create the changes desired. And so avoid speaking unpleasant words, even if they are true. Words must be intoned according to the convictions within and sincere words or affirmations repeated understandingly, feelingly, and willingly are sure to move the omnipresent cosmic vibratory force and render you aid in your difficulty. It's important too, that much like planting a seed, once your words are spoken, nurture them, but do not dwell on them. You cannot plant a seed of vibratory prayer in the field of cosmic consciousness and then pick it out every minute to see if it's germinated. That will negate the effects of your words. And so you see, we must be careful with our words for it is the bridge between the higher worlds and the physical. We exist in both worlds. Let us not be extremists who either hold exclusively to medicine or to energy healing, lest we draw a line of division between spirit and matter. The breaking free of the illusion of matter is a very careful process of raising one's consciousness to higher levels of inner lightness and cannot be done by fanatical belief. The body can be understood as a vibration materialized by a combination of solids, liquids, and gases. Beneath the flesh is the vibration of life force energy and beneath that is the vibration of subtle human consciousness, which in the vast majority of everyone remains isolated through ignorance of the cosmic consciousness. Within cosmic consciousness, there is no change or death, whereas human consciousness is subject to change and limitation. The spiritual path is one of gradually turning our attention away from the denser attachments to material reality and feeling the subtler, more stable vibrations of life energy and consciousness which never changes. In this way, mental and spiritual cure is superior in the curing of disease because will, imagination, and faith are different phases of consciousness, which direct and act from within. 
And these are the motive powers that stimulate and direct the life force energy to accomplish any task. There's a good example of this in the film, The Secret, when a woman named Kathy Goodman got cancer. After the diagnosis, she decided to spend all of her time focused on her healing through laughter and rest. In her heart and her faith, she believed fully that she was already healed and prayed to God every day saying, thank you for my healing. After three months, the tumor was gone. We can see therefore that both physical, mental, and spiritual methods of cure are useful in healing inasmuch as they can influence and awaken the life energy and bring it back to the body. It is the life energy that cures and whatever method which exerts the most power over the life energy is the superior method. Naturally, if the highest thing in creation is what we might call supreme oneness, cosmic consciousness, or God, then the power of cosmic consciousness is the greatest power over the mind and body. Thus, it is wise to seek its aid alone. This is what is meant by the biblical commandment, thou shalt not have any gods before me, meaning to seek the oneness of God consciousness first and listen to its guidance and follow it in your healing. This does not mean to make yourself passive or minimize the power of your mind or your body, but use the power of the mind and body to create connection with your divinity so that its light may shine through the mind and be reflected within the body. Today, almost all of us are in some level of suffering extreme or mild due to the breaking of spiritual, mental, or physical laws of life. And many more will continue to break these laws even though they know better. Therefore, it is important and necessary to consider the relative value of the different methods of curing diseases and spread this awareness far and wide. Inner knowledge of the inseparable unity of matter and spirit will solve all problems of illness and disease. And the sooner we come to understand that, the sooner the world will be healthy. When we go within to reconcile the roots of our illness, we often find a complicated maze of thought. For example, in the disconnection from our soul, we may try and fill that void with earthly pleasures, yet in doing so, we may become addicted without ever finding satisfaction. It's only when we hit bottom, most often, that we decide to climb out. Yet in the climbing out, how do we know that we're going the right way? Many will spend years attempting to climb out of the hole, only to realize at the end of their journey that they were traveling in the wrong direction. It's for this purpose we've created a new resource to support you in finding your way, Tao Te Ching, The Virtual Way. The Tao is a classic work of literary art imparting ancient wisdom, which humanity has treasured for thousands of years. Many have studied these writings and utilized its teachings on their path to self-realization and transcendence. By drawing upon its words, we can gain a deeper understanding of the world that we live in and the nature of the reality that we are a part of. This book invites a fresh understanding of these ancient teachings, drawing upon modern quantum science, holy scriptures, and even virtual reality to explain the Taoist wisdom of Lao Tzu in an entirely new way. By uniting spiritual precepts and scientific revelations, we may come to know the Tao more fully and live our lives virtuously. Use the link in the description to order your copy today. As a limited time offer, you may upgrade your order to access our ongoing virtual way study group in the Spiritverse community. And we look forward to seeing you there. May you find your innermost way and never be lost again. <laughs>